Hello, I'm Peter Bell, and I'm here with Mr. Alan Barry Lebkin, talk Advance Gold. Do I have the name of the company right, Alan? You do, sir. Thank you. I've, I get confused. <laughs> There's a lot going on, and now you have a, a lithium play. Congratulations. Yeah. We're looking for some white gold, I guess you could say. <laughs> I remember hearing about this years ago, the Solars in Mexico. Right and oh, okay, Alan's what's what's Alan up to? Um, but I read the news release that you have out today, and it seems legit. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty excited. I kind of had a when I was running Alset Minerals, I was involved with this series of solars in Central Mexico, and um, at the time funding was difficult, and the group that came along that wanted to uh, uh, fund the company, but they wanted me out and somebody else to run it. Um, and so I I passed the torch. And unfortunately for the Alset, uh, they, the group that took it over decided that they didn't want to do any work on the projects. Fast forward a couple of years and they gave the, 13 of these Solars uh, in Mexico back to the vendor. Yeah. And uh, so recently lithium has been getting hot again. Yeah. And I contacted the uh, vendor and he says, well, I've got 13 Solars available and I love working with you. So let's do a deal. And, um, you know, from my past experiences in diamonds, um, you know, one the first diamond mine in Canada was found by Chuck Pipke and his partner, um, and uh, they each kept a 10% interest, and mm -hmm. you know that kept kept them very motivated as partners. So I wanted to do something similar. So what we did is we acquired a 90% interest. They have a 10% interest carried through to production. If it gets into commercial production, they'll become a 10% uh, participating partner. They get 5 million shares. I get to buy the test plant that they built with their own money. And uh, I also acquired the proprietary rights to a method of extraction. I love the, I love the deal structure. I was, I was reading that and I thought, okay, you guys are aligned. Yeah, we want, I wanted a partner, really, and the the key reason I wanted these guys as a partner is because uh, senior Jose Parga, um, who's part of the vending company, he, um, he uh, ran the geological survey in Mexico for 30 years, and one of his jobs while running the survey was they would go out and do work to try to bring in outside the country investment. And one of the things they did was to do an analysis of all the lithium deposits throughout Mexico. And these ones in uh, central Mexico seem to have the best grades and the best prospects for mining. And uh, the other key person in the vending company is a guy named Gil Gilberto Zapata. And Sorry, his proper saying is Gilberto Zapata. And Gilberto is very well connected with the local government people, local, uh, state uh, government people, and all the way up into the federal level. And so having, you know, a smart geo involved and a smart businessman involved that are also, you know, carried interest people into production uh, I think is a no-brainer, and so I uh, I wanted them to be motivated partners. Well, and, and there's another name too, Dr. Roberto Perez Garibay, and it sounds like he's an inventor. Yeah, he's a brilliant guy. He runs the one of the most prestigious uh, research labs in the country, in at the university in Saltillo, and uh, when I was running Alset. Uh, he came to me and he said, I think I have a method that will very cheaply get the lithium out of the property. 
So I said, well, let me come to your university. It's only about three hours from where I live in Zacatecas, Mexico. And we went up there and I was blown away, Peter, by all the uh, research equipment that they had. For example, they had three brand new electron microprobes. I mean, I don't even see that in Canadian labs. And part of the reason why they are funded like that is one of the major mining companies um, had some problems with their gold and silver recovery, and he solved the problem for them. And uh, sorry for the dog barking in the background. Um, and uh, that's the thing with working at home in COVID times. Um, <laughs> he uh, he solved the, the problem for them, and uh, that helped them get all this research money, all this great equipment. And so I went up to meet with them. And uh, I was just blown away by the lab. And I said, well, why don't we do a, 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 an evalu- a, a study? And you can assess the, the, um, the, uh, the ability to separate. See, all the lithium is contained in the small size fractions. Yep. And so it is amenable to heavy mineral separation. Yep. And it's in the non-magnetic size fractions. So what we're able... What, he proved at the lab level was the ability to use heavy mineral separation and magnetic separation to create a high grade concentrate. Um, And then he ran leaching um, work on it as well. And in six hours they were getting like 85% recovery. And that's a pure, you know, lithium. It's not, uh, you know, where you've got to, you know, get out the impurities, you're left with the the lithium. And so then the company that, the guys that took over Alset, they didn't do anything with that. No, no, They didn't no, do anything no. with the project. Well, why would you? Why so, would you do met, why would you do met testing when you don't have a resource, Alan? That's, that's the favorite one no. I've heard from people. That, that's, they, people say this to me all the time. They're like, why would you bother? No, you got to drill up, drill off a resource. <laughs> Hold on guys. Well, Hold on, back it up. What are we doing? Here? Beauty, what are we doing? Here's another. Here's another beauty of these projects. You can see them from Google Earth. I know. I remember so, that. I, that's the one thing that stuck with me years ago. I remember one of Vancouver. You said, Peter, look at this, and I looked at. It, I was like, yeah, it was pretty big. Oh yeah, <laughs> I showed you it on my phone. Yeah, I remember. On, I remember, man. Google Earth on my phone. The resource is right there for you to look at. And the beauty is that it starts right, the mineralization starts right at the surface. Here's the other thing that's not well understood. When I ran Alset, we only did testing down to five meters. We're now, we're planning to go a 10 meter, like almost like auger probably. I I don't have all the details lined up yet, but what we'll do is we'll do a 10 meter evaluation. And in reality, with the size that you can see at surface, yeah. and with ten me- just going down ten meters, yeah. you would have a phenomenal resource that would have decades of uh, of material there for to be processed. So, and this is not, uh, and this is not the lithium. When we hear lithium solars, we think these water. You know, and you got to have the convection and and whatever is going on with the water, bringing them up and the salts and pumping things. Down. I don't. I've stayed away from all that. I just don't understand it. Uh, haven't studied it enough. But this is this is more like a free dig scenario where you're actually dealing exactly. with. Exactly. Yeah. And then the uh, the 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 test plant that uh, Dr. Gar- uh, Perez Garibay designed. It's almost, think of like silos, small silos. So you do the heavy mineral separation, you do the mag separation, then you got your concentrate. Then you put the concentrate in these little silos and uh, leach it out. Sorry, I'm opening my garage door. I'm on my, get, heading off to some meetings here. Sorry about the noise there. But um, then you put it in these silos and you leach it out in a matter of like six hours. I know, you said so, that, yeah. Here's the big difference in the concentrate will be similar to the grade that you look at in the Chile and Argentina solars. Okay. Yep. But instead of spending two years 
to use the sun to leach out your lithium, you can do it in a matter of six hours in these silos. Here's another beauty of it. They're modularized. You want to do bigger bulk samples? You take you you build another uh, silo. You well, and you can even get into stuff? pressure. Uh, talk about pressure leach. You know that may even accelerate some of those leaching uh, chemical reactions well, that are that, happening. I know. There are other things that we might be able to use to um, yeah. to uh, concentrate it even more efficiently. But just at the lab level, being able to be able to create a high grade concentrate from uh, from um, heavy mineral and mag separation and yeah. then bleaching it in a matter of hours. I mean, yeah. it's almost like you've already proven up the economics. So now we'll start doing these, uh, the, the test pilot plant level. And what the goal there is to uh, prove up the economics. So we can come out and say, well, it takes this much to do this, this much to do that, and here's your cost. Ideally, what I think is going to happen here, and this is speculation, not rank speculation, because I'm going off of lab work that's done by an expert in mineral extraction. I think there's the possibility that we could be the lowest cost producer of lithium on the planet. Well, if you're going to it's new technologies right when you come in with a new technology and things like that so that's when you you're able to even just the speed right whether or not the costs come in here or there like yeah we you know but the the potential to have this the control on the speed and not to be subject to some of these environmental things that we really don't have a lot exactly. of control over that it's that puts you in the driver's seat in a big way it's transformational in the similar sense of you know, 40 years ago, you couldn't get that no seam gold out of the yes. dirt in uh, in Nevada. Yes. But heat bleaching uh, made it so that, you know, you're looking at dollars per ton of cost. So yeah. if you have 30 or 40 or 50 bucks worth of gold, no seam gold, and you've got that low cost production, it's now a money making machine. Well, and, and the scale uh, of those I, things. Think about the scale of those oxide gold operations too, right? Exactly. Yeah, well so that's, our scale our scale is, you know, how quickly can you build pilot plants? Um <laughs> and uh how big can you make them? Um uh, because well, there's so much dirt there that, you know, we we we've got uh, you know, decades worth of dirt we could be processing and the pilot plant is built yeah yeah and, uh the pilot plant's built the mag separators out at the out at the plant uh i just received uh it's sitting out the mag separator sitting outside my house waiting yep. to be delivered uh today so yeah i'm thinking within a couple months we'll um we'll have uh We'll start having economic numbers from the test plant. What do you and think is the uh, permitting and timelines and all that on the bulk sampling at site? Like yeah, the, the, the beauty TV. of uh, Mexico is that it's almost like those privately held uh, land projects down in Nevada. Like for bulk sampling, we don't need a mining license. What we need is the the local community ajitos. Uh, to give us permission, and some places they're privately owned as well. And so we just have to work out a deal where, Oof. you know, and I've done these, I did these when I was running Alset. Uh, in fact, I did a lot of community outreach to um, uh, Peter. In one case, one of the Solars had a, the local community wanted, uh, they had some uh, garbage problems. We cleaned it all up and set up a system where the garbage trucks were going out there to keep it clean. Another community, they had uh, they they hadn't had water uh, because they didn't have a water pump for like three years, oh and they God. couldn't get the funding from the federal government. So it cost us about seventy five hundred U.S. dollars. We built we got them a new water plant, and they've had water ever since. And these solars are kind of in close proximity. 
and they're really um uh they're they're you know one guy marries a guy for, a girl from another community so the all the communities are interlinked and they're great vine of getting information out is very quick and i have a very good reputation down here for community outreach creating jobs and uh yeah. and so yeah. Yeah. we yeah. what we'll do is we'll be talking to the ejidos uh the presidents and the key people to organize the uh approval to do bulk sampling and we'll get on it as soon as possible like i said i think within a couple months we'll be generating uh data on the statistics of uh, heavy mineral separation mag separation wow. and and leaching and in the meantime i intend to do some uh, drilling to probably within 100 meter line spacing we can go in with 10 meter holes and uh you know for those that want to calculate the resources they can do it themselves we'll give them all the data and i think we can get all of that done in the time when i'm working on getting the approval to do the bulk sampling so we'll be able to get a lot of grade data out there and, well uh, then auger drilling something. auger drilling too right and yeah you know, that's that's like high that. impact that's that staff that can be quick and and if and if you're getting production or i don't know if you can get grade stuff out of the pilot plant you know but if you're if you're cutting out or reducing the amount of reliance you have on the assay labs as well you know and well, avoiding what, the queues there what we'll be able to do and ba you, i gotta remind you of something peter where i am in zacatecas mexico is a mining hot hotbed yeah. And we have Canadian labs right here in the town of Zacatecas. So one of the big uh, bottlenecks in the labs in Canada is doing the preparation, the, the assay preparation work. Mm -hmm. What we do is we have all the preparation done down here in Mexico. Then they send it up to their lab in Canada. We jump Beautiful. through the key of uh, companies doing MAGSEP or doing preparation and i can get results back in you know three weeks four weeks something yeah. like that so um what we'll do with the drilling is we'll get the baseline numbers and then we'll run it run that run material through the processing lab to show how we can upgrade it and uh leach it out of there quickly so yeah it's pretty exciting i'm really well sorry. and then you get and then you get concentrate Right, you get concentrate off the pile plant that you can send around to people. Hey, have a look at this Tesla or whatever, and uh, and then you can also, you know, whatever is coming out of the leach circuit too. You can be sending that off for because the product qualification process yep. with these industrial yep. minerals buyers is brutal. It can be a well, long gauntlet. We're left we're left with like a pure lithium because we're leaching out everything out, yes. and we're left with lithium. So I think this is going to prove to be a very uh, exactly what they're looking for, and um, and uh, we can show it to them quickly. My goal, my ultimate goal, is to do everything I possibly can here in Mexico. So what I would like to do is find some part Mexican partners that will help us with the you know moving things ahead aggressively, and you know having a product that comes from. Made in Mexico, baby. Yeah. Well, and Tejas is not so far away either. And, right, and people moving there, right? Things happening there. Talking about Tesla moving there, right? So it's, uh, you're in a. Yeah, who knows? Maybe uh, Tesla will be coming knocking on our door. <laughs> yeah. That would be a nice <laughs> scenario. Um, but, yeah, I really want, I moved down here to Zacatecas because of these Solars. And uh, my whole goal, I'm, one of my mentors is a guy named Andre Gumond, who ran uh, Virginia Gold. And, you know, I said to Andre, you know, what are some of your milestones? He said, you know, Alan, the biggest thing was when I was able to go from a project we found and go to the mine and be able to see hundreds of jobs. Yeah, it really yeah, wasn't that. It didn't really have a lot to do with the money he made or what he made for the shareholders. For him, it was all about creating jobs. And Zacatecas, Mexico is an extremely great place to be mining. 
And, you know, my goals are in line with Andre's. I want to create hundreds and hundreds of jobs. And I think that these Solars can do that. So, you know, that's the, that's the big picture goal. Capstone Gold, Mina Cozamin is just kind of north of Zacatecas. So are the yeah, Solars... The I can drive to it. There's a mine that is right behind the, the mall here in Zacatecas City. I was yeah, over yeah. in Fresno, which is about 40 minutes from from um, where I live. And and, uh, and you can drive, you can see from driving into town, you can see the mag silver mine that's going to make them the second lowest cost producer of silver on the planet. Um, you, you drive anywhere here and you see mines all over the place, Peter. It's, yeah, it's I know. It's mining where, central. And I remember you showed me and on Google Earth, and I'm trying to dig around and see them now. Are the Solars there? Are they by the the city of Zacatecas right there, or are they over um, by Fresnillo? Well, some of them are close. Some of them are close to Fresnillo. Um, okay. All of them have a community around them uh, yeah. because historically they produced salt for the mines out of these things hundreds of years ago. And so that's kind of an indicator of where to look for mines is where there's communities because that's where the mines were. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not a rocket scientist, right? I like things to be simple for me to figure out. And, uh, uh, and uh, that's... Wow. That's the the town of La Salada. The town of La Salada, right? North exactly. of Sydney. Exactly. Wow. That's the, community. that's the community where they didn't have water for three years. And we built, we got them a water pump. And since then, they've had water and... Uh, Good for and you. The community doesn't forget that kind of stuff, Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well done. And and you, did you mention private land? Do they have like patented claims or or private property where it would you no, know kind of expedite? The, the, the private land is the private landowners have the uh, surface rights and the okay. uh, and then the mineral rights belong to us. And one of the community or one one that I worked with really closely. She came to my house, the property, the surface rights owner. We did a great deal. She was super happy with the work we did. And uh, that could be, it's called Saldivar. That could be the first solar that we start bulk sampling on because I have a really good relationship with the uh, surface rights owner. And uh, I would, you know, I'm a big guy on community outreach. I don't know if you remember, but when I was in Diamonds, I went into a couple of communities that were the hardest places to get um, permits from. And we never had problems getting permits because I did the community outreach. And, you know, my whole philosophy about community outreach is to engage and to include and to respect. And whether I'm in Canada or Mexico, that's what I do. And so, you know, that means going out and talk to them at the early stages have them involved and respect the the community and uh you know i don't need to be taught those things i'm kind of one of the guys that helped a lot of people in the mining business come to the realization that the old method of sort of pushing your weight around doesn't work anymore uh, in <laughs> canada and you've got to go out there and engage be respectful and include uh the locals and that's exactly that that will never change with me, Peter. That I yeah. uh, I pride myself on that stuff. Well, it's good business, right? You know, it, it's good. It's smart it. business, and it makes everybody happy. It really hurts to see stuff in Saskatchewan recently where, uh, you know, some First Nations talking about oh, provincial permits don't give social license, and it's like, well, yikes! I guess we knew well, that, but oh man, based isn't on that a the constitution? They don't. And that yeah. means that the that the mining companies, it's incumbent, it's uh, crucial for the mining companies to get out. See, the reason that they're doing yes. that, Peter, is because they're not being respected, yeah. they're not yeah. being included, and they're not being uh, engaged. They're not being listened to. They're not being listened to either. Exactly. You know, you say, it's, you know, and then... Just... Hey, if somebody came to your community and said, oh. uh, we're going to build a mall there. No, uh, no, it's I when I invest it. in stocks, when, when, you know, when we're an investor and then management don't listen to us and, and then they come back and they're like, whoops, we made a mistake. And we're like, guys, we saw this coming. We tried to tell you like, yeah, 
exactly. it's the same way with, exactly. with small investors who feel like they're not getting listened to, you know. It's no different out there in the land in Canada. It's no different in Mexico. Well, it's, it's a no lot. It's a lot more serious. Brazil. You know, money yeah. money is one thing. It's one thing for us to get jerked around on some money or this or that, but it's another thing when they're coming to your where you live and, and really, you know, exactly. mining is intrusive. Pushing you around. And there's so many old school miners out there still. I think that they, you know, the old school way of pushing your weight around, telling them take it or leave it, works, yeah. and it doesn't, and it's not no. going to in Canada, it's not going to in Mexico, Chile, Argentina, or Timbuktu. You got well, to get just, out there, respect the people. And you're going to get your advanced gold's going to come along and eat your lunch, is what's, you know. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and what's I'm up with Africa? Starting... The stuff in Africa keeps kick, ticking away. Yeah, we've got new partners in Africa, and uh, they came up with a new model of the vein system at uh, the historical mine there, and, and it was the first mine, Kakamega, in uh, western in the west part of Kenya, uh, and uh, they have come up with a new model. There's three parallel high-grade veins that are open at depth. They seem to dip in the same direction, and uh, they want to get in there and do some drilling. Uh, the next drilling campaign will get us down to a 10% interest. It will earn us down to a 10% interest, at which point it converts into a 3.5% royalty. And uh, royalties on high-grade gold deposits are not difficult to sell, and uh, that's probably what we'll do. It's just I want to see, I want to see them drill those three veins because, you know, they're talking about 12 gram kind of veins. Uh, yeah. and three of them that go in the same direction. And these things tend to be open three, 4,000 meters deep. They're yeah. really like the stuff that, uh, that you know, made the Red Lake mine and, uh, and the stuff that Amex Gold is finding now, uh, Amex Exploration is finding in Quebec. And so I want to see what the depth looks like because the old miners were really rudimentary and they left it wide open at depth. So... I want to see what happens with that drilling, get us diluted down to a three, three and a half percent uncapped royalty. And uh, when I see some grades, I'll start shopping it. Kenya too. Imagine that, you know, I, I'm glad to hear yeah. more about Eastern Africa. I think that's, I think there's a lot of potential out there. Um, Phenomenal. The geology is spectacular and uh, you know, it's again a place where they need jobs and uh yeah. And, you know, I think Shanta will roll up their sleeves and uh, and get some drilling done. And I think they'll like what they see. I like what I yeah. see. And I'm an explorationist. Yeah. They're a miner. And, uh, but, you know, they're, I'm an explorationist. So I, uh, I like what I see. And, uh, and it's pretty straightforward. The model of the veins is, is quite uh, easy to see. So get in there and follow it to depth. See what you yep. boys got. They tend to get higher grade as you go deeper. For example, at the Red Lake Mine, they didn't get into the jewelry boxes and the jewelry store until they were under a thousand meters, and that's yep. wide open here in Kenya. Yeah, yeah, yep. and nice to have that LSE London connection in there too. I feel like the London market understands, understands Africa better and and Africa a little bit better than Canada yeah and you know it's way really important better, to have in country you got to have a presence in country so for you to be in Zacatecas in Mexico here you know yeah that's that's good focus that's really where all my focus is the stuff in Kenya I hope to be able to you know sell it at a good price and be able to fund our efforts down here in Mexico with what I sell it for and you know, three three and a half percent royalties with a on a high grade gold vein system is worth a lot of money. Nice. And yeah. I want them to show us what it's worth so I can sell it at a premium and and uh and spend all my money down here in Mexico. Well and, and spending all your money, you know, this then the Salars, um what about Tabacena and Veneditas? Yeah, Tabascania were were we're finding kind of a dual target kind of thing there. We've got a vein system, and that's what makes all the mines here in Zacatecas. But then we've also been hitting a, a sulfide system. And uh, I've got to do some more geophysics. We want to do about – the last geophysics we did was on 100-meter wide spacing. And the device that we used was not modern, so it didn't have the kind of juice 
that you want to get good uh, depth penetration and we didn't have the line spacing to get good clarity uh, uh, resolution. So I'm going I'm planning to do a 25 meter line spacing geophysics uh, and a, a much more modern uh, uh, device. And my goal there is to try to find the heat source of where all these sulfides, like we're getting some sulfides over a couple meters that are running 5% uh, zinc. And that's yeah. in disseminated sulfide. That's not even massive sulfide. So I think there's a, you know, a, a deeper heat source there somewhere. And with, uh, with more uh, better resolution and depth penetration on geophysics, I think it'll help us find it. So we're still trying to figure out the, the vein system and the sulfide system. And so that's another thing. I think this lithium is transformational that could lead us to near-term production. And I think that will help us to do all of our efforts on the precious metal side of the company. So we can have, uh, uh, you know, something that can generate cash flow and something that can look for swinging for the fences and precious metals. Well, and even the technology side with the lithium, you know, the ability to, if that technology does prove out and, and people recognize and, and realize that, hey, this works, this is a whole new source of material for lithium. Yeah, it's you know, going to be like, it's going to be like when... That intellectual property people, is a big deal, like like with the Carlin, like you said. Yeah, exactly. So anybody wants to use that here in Mexico, they got to come through advanced gold. Well, and it's a global, I'm sure those, those you know, it's... I wonder if there's other deposit types like with that kind of. Well, Peter, lithium. you never want to reinvent the wheel, right? And if some company knows how to do it, it yeah. you're best off usually to go to that company. And yes, there are similar solars throughout the world. Uh, I did an analysis using Google Earth on all the ones that I could find, and there, there are several of them that uh, could be used as technology. So. Yeah, you know, it's first come, first serve kind of thing. And the first to come will be our stuff. But, yeah. you know, who knows? Maybe we can do joint ventures down the road where we solve problems for others. It's all to play for at that point. It's all there. <laughs> yeah, then that's just gravy, you know. It's uh, yeah. Yeah. icing on the cake. Wow, I'm surprised. I didn't expect this one, but I like it. Well done. Well, I'm glad because you're a shareholder and I like to make our shareholders happy. That's another thing Andre Gamond always said to me. He said, I'll do a good job for your shareholders and they'll always stick with you. Yeah. And uh, we've had a good group that stuck with us. We, You know, it's one of the reasons that we only have 53 million shares out. And uh, I, I own a big chunk of it. Our chairman owns a big chunk of it. So we're aligned with the shareholders. We've got our friends and family into it. You know, if yeah. you counted everything, it's probably over 50% of a company that only has 53 million shares out. So, yeah, we, we eat our own cooking. There's some questions on CEO coming in. Somebody says, when do you expect a PEA? Um, I think it's probably pretty hard to answer that question here. I guess this could potentially be, a, you know, a 43-101. You could go down that pathway. But, you know, one of the things yeah. about bulk sampling is you can accelerate the production timelines. And if it's low CapEx, exactly, low OpEx, it's Peter, like, it's just, no, we don't even know, need to go there. So I'm not a big fan of the PEA. and Yeah, plus or minus 50% is goofy on PEA. Yeah, exactly. You can't, you can't rely on the PEA anyways. Secondly, you spend a bunch of money doing it. Thirdly, they do it because they think that that's going to help them get bought out. Well, the company that's going to buy you out, they don't need your your PEA. <laughs> They're doing it internally with their own yeah, software exactly. and their own people, and they trust their own numbers. So Yeah, they're not us, plus or minus 50%. They're plus or minus 20. Thank you very much. <laughs> really, if they're cutting a check, you can, rely, you can be sure that their statistics are better than any junior can put out there. So <laughs> my, you know, my resource calculation will be, well, here it is on Google Earth. Here's the drilling we did. Here's the data. Here's the density. You run your own numbers. It's easy math. And uh, and in the meantime, we'll do bulk sampling and prove up the economics and yep. start producing it ourselves. Uh, and generating those headline news because your business is generating headline news. Your business is not generating 43-101 reports. 
And you what's the percentage that, re- recovery percentages? Do we know? I, it's early for that kind of stuff yet. I would think recovery. Well, percent. like I said earlier, through when you do heavy mineral separation and mag separation, you cut out 80% of your material. Then you've got a 20% high grade concentrate that you put through a plant, through through leaching, and it takes about six hours to get over 85% recovery. Yep. Amazing. Looking forward to seeing more of that testing. That's really encouraging start. Um, and yep. brine or clay? Are we, can we talk about, is this a brine or this is a... Well, it's a combination it's a, of fine dirt and clay yeah. and mixed up stuff. And so that sort of stuff, what I'd like to do is that's why I want to do this 10 meter drilling. And not only am I going to do 10 meter drilling on a grid that covers the whole thing on a resource wide spacing if somebody wants to run the resource numbers they can run it themselves Um, but i also want to do one hole to get down to bedrock because yeah totally some prior geophysics suggests that these things could go down to a thousand meters so i want to know well that's it's possible uh, you know like there's some stuff in saskatchewan and there's two and a half kilometers of sand and shales before you uh, get down to bedrock in southern uh, saskatchewan i had no idea it's amazing you got it you got it and so um you know we can uh we the geophysics suggests that it goes deep so we want what i want to do is i don't just want to do a hole to get down to bedrock i want to do a hole to see because often what you're going to see in any deposit is zonation of grade so i want to see maybe you go down 500 meters and it blows out to you know bonanza grades yeah, you don't know yeah. that yet i'm just looking at the the meat and potatoes of down to 10 meters who knows what's below that and i want to find out some of that with the, so what i would envision is like 100 meter spacing down to 10 meters and then uh, one hole per solar to shoot for bedrock and understand how deep it is and also the the zonation of grade seismic seismic can give you a good depth to bedrock i think too as well that kind of work might have historically already been done <laughs> yeah there there you go i love it um and the brine and so this is not a classic brine play though no no this it's, is dirt this is it's not Certain clay that you you use heavy mineral separation and mag separation and then leach it. Um, so yeah, no, it's not. And the clays, the clays might be a little difficult to deal with in terms of the the screening and the separation and stuff, but not impossible. Who knows? Might not be as much of a problem. You know, when I was looking in diamonds, there was a company that had a similar type is- issue, and they were able to to uh, get a concentrate with water under not much yeah. pressure so who knows yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll that's cross right. those that's bridges right. as we come to them well and you get there pretty quick with the bulk sampling stuff you know the fact that we're not trying to drill off some you know not trying to do a bunch of drilling it's like no no let's, nope. let's do what matters here nope. it's all about moving dirt through the test plant see what the economics look like and hopefully show the world that we're on to something here that can be one of the lowest cost producers on the planet Imagine putting it through a trommel, a big trommel for a like, plaster mining operation. Yeah, down there. Well, you know, those kind of things are also potentially, uh, you know, I had a, when I was running Alset, I had a guy do a, a valuation of putting the dirt out on a, uh, on a pad and letting it dry before you do all that other stuff. So we're yeah. going to wrinkle, get all the wrinkles out on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, best method to get that out of there at the least cost and the purest uh, product we can come up with. And, uh, you know, that's well what the test plan's all about. Well done. Thank you, Alan. Hey, thank you. And thank you for your time. And we're, I'm going to have lots to talk about and uh, we'll do this again. I hope soon, uh, Peter. Appreciate you. I'll get this recording up on CEO and I'll have it up on YouTube and I'll generate a transcript there at some point for the, for the crowd, I see lots of chatter back and forth, so look forward to seeing, awesome. seeing you online. Awesome. Well, I'm Alan. glad. Thank you. I'm happy to be able to introduce it to your your audience, Peter, and thank you for your time. Welcome. Goodbye.